Praise be Jesus Christ. Please join us in your opening hymn, O Come All You Faithful in Breaking Bread, hymn number 96. Number 96, please rise.
O God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Zion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry, together they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Zion. Break out together in song, O, Eru o ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm in the sight of all the nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God, the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through the Son, whom he made heir of all things, and through whom he created the universe, who is the refulgence of his glory, the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he had accomplished purification from sin, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, this day I have begotten you? Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me? And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord. so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him, but the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave power to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by a man's decision, but of God. And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, 
And we saw his glory, the glory as of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness we have all received grace in place of grace, because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed him. The Gospel of the I can summarize my message for you this morning with one word, presence. Not presence as in gifts, but presence, like each of you are present here in the church. Presence as in the fact that something exists, occurs, or is present. John's Gospel, which we just heard, begins with this beautiful statement, the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. God takes on human flesh so he can be present and live with us. There's something different about being present in the flesh, isn't there? For me, I love technology in the way that it can connect us. I can send a Christmas card or emails, text messages, tweets, snaps or instant messages to my friends and family, all over the world in an instant. I can call them, group chat with them, or video chat with them. But I'll tell you, nothing compares to being able to pick up my nephew or one of my nieces and give them a hug in my own arms, to pick up and hold a newborn infant and to stare into his or her eyes, to kiss your loved ones, or to sit in the living room on the couch with your family and friends or around the dining room table and just spend time with one another and be present to one another. Well, it's the same way for God. In the Old Testament, we see that God reveals his name to Moses as Yahweh, I am, because God reveals that he is not just a being, but is being itself, which means that you can't ask the question, whether or not God exists, because God is existence. He is everything that is. But we sometimes forget this, and God knows we can forget him. I think for the, exist, uh, for the example of the Russian cosmonaut who went out into outer space and he said he looked all over space and he didn't see God anywhere, so he concluded that God did not exist. Well, duh, of course you're not going to see God somewhere. He's not a thing that we see. God is everywhere. God is always present. So God knows that we can forget that he is everywhere and that we could be like the person who's sitting in a house full of family and friends, but is instead on their phone looking for someone to talk to. God is present all around us, but we miss what's right in front of us. It is us who are not truly present to God. And so God came into the world to reveal his presence to us. It's beautiful that in the Bible we read that at the very time when the Roman Empire was holding a census, where they were counting to see how many people were present throughout the empire, God appears in Jesus Christ as if to say, hey, make sure you count me too. I am here with you. I am present. I am dwelling among you. And when God entered into our humanity, he no longer reveals himself as Yahweh, as I, I am, but takes the name of Jesus, which means the Lord saves, or Yahweh saves. So Jesus' name reveals who he is. Jesus is God. But it also reveals his mission to save us. And so I am 
becomes, I am the one who saves. But how does God save us? Through his presence, through being with us. We read in the gospel also that Jesus is also to be known as Emmanuel, which means God with us. Sin, on the other hand, separates us from God. God is no longer present to us, not because God stops loving us, but because we stop loving him. We stop believing in his love. We stop believing that he is present, and we push him away and out of our lives. But we are told that Joseph will name him Jesus because he will save the people from their sins. We are saved from separation from God. We are saved from self-centeredness, from selfishness, from isolation and living a life without experiencing love. In Jesus Christ, God wishes to heal us and to heal our separation and be united with us. And this is truly good news because it means that God is not some distant being somewhere out there, but he is present to us always. And he is present in a very fundamental way, although in a hidden way, each time we gather together for Mass in the Eucharist. Because if we think about the Christmas story, we see that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And what does Bethlehem mean? But house of bread. Already we see clues that Jesus comes to feed us as Eucharist. He's born in a manger, the place where the animals eat, because Jesus came in the flesh to feed us with his flesh. He came in the flesh to say, this is my body given up for you. He came to truly give himself to us. And he was born as a small child because he will continue to come into the world as a small piece of bread, something very small and fragile, where he gives himself to us. And he doesn't do it just one time only, but just like any other food, we continue to grow hungry, and so week after week, we return to this table of the altar to be fed with a living bread that contains the very presence of God within it itself. And as we receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we bring his presence into ourselves. We receive him who was without a home into our homes and into our families. And then we can bring this presence out into the world. We are called to bring his love and mercy where it is lacking. We are called to bring his light where there is darkness. We are called to bring his peace where there is separation and division and war. But again, God knows we can forget this, especially in times of struggle. In times of struggle, we might ask the question, well, where is God now? But remember that Jesus said in Matthew 25 that whatever you did for one of the least of the brothers of mine, you did for me. Jesus identifies with us in our hunger, in our loneliness, in our nakedness, and in our sickness, and in our imprisonment. He shares in it and is present to us there. So he identifies with all those who are hungry because he who is the bread of life knew hunger and became dependent on others to feed him. He identifies with the stranger because he who is the source of all communion knew loneliness and rejection when there was no room for them in the inn. He identifies with all those who are naked and without clothes because he who created everything was born into the world naked and poor, without anything dependent on us to clothe him and to care for him. He identifies with the sick because he who is the source of life united with those who were sick and suffering and died and instead died for our sins. And he identifies with all those who are imprisoned because he who is the source of all freedom took our sins upon himself to free us by sharing his very life with us. And again, this is very good news because it means that we can recognize the presence of God when we suffer 
and we can recognize the presence of God in those who suffer around us. So we are called to recognize that presence in all those who are hungry, those who are hungry for food, those who are hungry for meaning in their life and purpose, and those who are hungry for hope when they feel hopeless. We can recognize God's presence in those who are strangers, especially in this time when many people might feel lonely and feel depressed and feel like they're missing connection and need a connection with others, especially all those immigrants and those who are new to our country and all those who are orphans who do not have a family of their own. He, we can find God's presence in the naked and in the poor and in the sick and in the dying, and we can find his presence in the imprisoned, both those who are physically in prison, but also those who are imprisoned by addictions and imprisoned by their own limitations, to recognize God's presence there and to bring it out, to bring hope to those situations. But God is present there in a hidden way, and when we give to those people out of love, we discover God's presence within them. God's presence is discovered through giving, which means that God's present that he wants to give to us this Christmas is to be present to us. Every Christmas gift that we give ought to reflect God's self-giving love that he shared on Christmas. Because what we see in God is that he doesn't give something to us. He gives his very self to us. Which means that for us, it doesn't matter whether a gift that we give is very expensive or inexpensive. All that matters is if we contain, we give a piece of ourself with that gift. For if we don't give ourself with the gift, then any gift that we give will not be enough. We must be present in the gifts that we give. Because the angel tells Joseph, Zachariah, and Mary the same message. Do not be afraid, the Lord is with you. And so we see at the first Christmas, we read that there's a multitude of angels who are present, praising God and singing God's glory. The shepherds were present, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. The wise men were present to see the newborn king, to do him homage and bring him gifts and each gave their own unique gift of their presence to Christ as they gathered around Jesus to adore him. But all the while, if you gaze on this nativity scene, you will see the hidden reality that it wasn't just them adoring Christ. All the while, God was adoring them. God was looking at all these people that he created out of love and these people that he came into the world to save. Well, God is doing the same thing right now for each and every one of us. He is looking at you right now. He sees you and he sees what is in your heart and he has come to give you the gift of life, the gift of his presence so that you will not be afraid, that you will always know that God is close to you, that he loves you and wants to be with you always, to share the gift of his eternal life with you. But will you give him the gift of your presence this Christmas? May the gift of God's presence fill your hearts and your homes and your families this Christmas. Do not take it for granted. God exists and he desires to have a relationship with you. Talk to God and recognize his presence in the Eucharist each Sunday at Mass. And then bring that presence out into the world. Seek out God's presence in all those who are lonely, who are sick and suffering around you. Though it might be difficult for them and difficult for you, you too can experience joy and hope and peace by bringing God's presence where it is lacking. God's presence is all around you. I pray that you will receive the gift of his presence this Christmas.
United as one family in faith, we express our belief in the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and His Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Amistad Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we rejoice in the goodness of God. With trust, we present these needs to our Father in heaven. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for all church leaders, may they proclaim by their words and actions the good news of Jesus Christ to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those entrusted with worldly power, may they rejoice in their efforts toward peace and continue to work to make peace on earth a lasting reality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, loved ones and friends. May our love for one another be strengthened in the joy of our celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ here and at home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, for all the sick, especially those with terminal illnesses, may they experience healing of body and soul during this time of peace and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, Let us pray for Catherine and Joseph Block and for all who have died, that they may see God's face this day, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our community gathered here, and for those whom we love, that the Lord may grant us a spirit of joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Father, we praise you with joy for having sent your Son into the world. Give us grace to be faithful to the gospel we profess. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, Lord, our oblation in this solemn day, when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us wholly pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord.
resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever.
that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. I would like to wish each and every one of you a very Merry Christmas of the Sochfion. On behalf of myself, on our pastor, Father Irenaeus, and Father Tadeusz, and Father Tomasz, and I thank you for your presence. What a joy it is to be with you as part of our family, as part of our church, and as part of the body of Christ. But what a joy also it is for each of us to go out into the world and to bring God's presence his joy, his peace, his hope, and his love out into the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth, as a loom in this most holy day, drive far from you the darkness of vice, and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. May God, who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to the shepherds by the angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives, and make you heralds of the gospel. together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gift of his peace and favor, and make you sharers with the church in heaven.